Good morning. Welcome to Morning Expresso. You're watching Indian Express. I'm Charula Tapiswas. Let's begin with the big story of the day. The Karnataka government on Monday informed the state high court that efforts have been initiated by the state to ensure that officials of its education department do not act in an untoward manner with Muslim girl students while implementing the court's interim order that barred religious symbols in colleges where dress codes have been prescribed until the matter is decided. Although the High Court's interim order said that dress codes can be enforced only in colleges where they have been prescribed, it has been interpreted by education and state authorities as a general ban on wearing religious attire to colleges. Here are the stories we'll find only in Indian Express. An investigation by the Indian Express revealed that days after US-based Freedom House and Sweden-based Vedem Institute downgraded Indian democracy, the Ministry of External Affairs prepared a detailed slideshow and a talking points list to showcase Indian democracy the Indian way. And in a move that raises questions of constitutional propriety, it also sent these to the Lok Sabha Secretariat, which is an independent office that functions under the advice of the Lok Sabha Speaker. Among the key speaking notes shared with the Lok Sabha Secretariat, the MEA sought to highlight that critics of Indian democracy don't acknowledge that in India today there is a much broader representation of people in politics, in leadership positions and in civil society. And these people are much more confident about their culture, about their language, about their beliefs. They are also less from the English speaking world, are less connected to other global centers. And this difference is judged politically and harshly. Let's have a look at the front page. The technical committee appointed by the Supreme Court to inquire into allegations of unauthorized surveillance using Pegasus software has submitted its interim report to the top court. A bench headed by Chief Justice of India N.V. Ramana will consider pending petitions along with the interim report on February 23rd. A 26-year-old Bajrang Dal worker was stabbed to death in an incident allegedly triggered by previous enmity in Karnataka's Shivamoga city, leading to arson and stone throwing in the city during the funeral procession on Monday afternoon. Two persons have been arrested in connection with the death. A curfew has been imposed in Shivamoga for the next 24 hours. Here are the must-reads. As elections in Uttar Pradesh move eastwards, Avara Pashu or stray cattle is becoming increasingly potent an issue for the Bhartiya Janta Party. The effects of cattle slaughter ban, its strict enforcement by the Yogi Adityanath-led BJP government are clearly seen on the ground. Meanwhile, in Rai Bareilly, the Congress's problems in party president Sonia Gandhi's Lok Sabha constituency are symbolic of its struggle for revival across Uttar Pradesh. What can it offer them, voters ask, who believe they have missed the development bus for standing by the Congress. Polls in Manipur are rarely shaped by political parties. Instead, what influences them is allegiances to clans and tribes, civil society organizations, and as many believe even the underground, a euphemism for the state's several militant groups. Then there's the perennial hill valley divide and of course the abundance of defecting candidates. This tiny hill town captures it all. Four years ago, soon after becoming the second youngest grandmaster in the world, R. Pragnanantha told uh, the Indian Express that beating world number one Magnus Carlsen is his biggest dream. The 16-year-old's I can't believe it moment arrives as he defeated the world champion in the eighth round of Air Things Masters online rapid chess tournament. And in today's Delhi Confidential, Bihar Chief Minister Nitish Kumar as a candidate for the president's post with the BJP state unit keen on replacing Nitish, opposition leaders hope the party would give it a thought. And finally, in this episode of Three Things, we discuss how a special court sentenced 36 people to death in the 2008 Ahmedabad Blasts case and how investigators seem to have failed to tie loose ends in this matter. That's a news wrap from my end. For the latest updates, don't forget to subscribe to our channel, The Indian Express. Thank you for watching.